1971, an unidentified man hijacked a plane for a $200,000 ransom. Then he parachuted into thin air. Flight 305 was midway through its 30-minute trip from Portland to Seattle when a passenger hijacked the plane. This would prove, however, to be a hijacking like no other. In fact, the events of that day in 1971 would go on to become the stuff of legend and baffle America's best detectives for 45 years. The hijacker that day didn't look like a typical terrorist. By all accounts, he looked unremarkable. He had purchased a one-way ticket on the Northwest Orient Airlines flight on November 24, 1971. At no point did he show any sign that he would become one of the most notorious criminals the FBI has ever pursued. Indeed, according to most accounts, he was dressed like any other traveling businessman with a simple attache case. So ordinary was his appearance, in fact, that witnesses couldn't even agree on his height or the exact seat in which he sat. But one thing was for certain, he booked his seat under the name Dan Cooper. It went down like this. Shortly after the 2.05 p.m. takeoff from Portland, Cooper lit a cigarette and ordered a bourbon and soda. He then calmly got the attention of the nearest flight attendant, a young lady by the name of Florence Schaffner. He handed Schaffner a piece of paper. At first, she ignored the note, merely assuming it to be a lonely businessman looking for company. That's when Cooper leaned over and said, Miss, you'd better look at that note. I have a bomb. But because hijackings were strangely common in the 1970s, Schaffner was aware that this might just be a hoax. So to be sure, she asked to see the bomb, and Cooper duly obliged. Indeed, he briefly opened his case to reveal two rows of four red cylinders and wires connected to them. Like most hijackers, Cooper demanded cash, $200,000 to be precise, all in used American bills. He also demanded that the plane be rerouted to Seattle, where it was to be refueled. Lastly, he asked for four parachutes, two primary and two reserve. The pilots and the authorities agreed to his demands. Indeed, in a quiet corner of Seattle-Tacoma Airport, the airline boss handed over the cash and the parachutes. In return, Cooper let all 36 passengers go, and he also permitted Schaffner and one flight attendant to leave the plane. Now the only individuals left on board the Boeing 727 were Cooper himself, flight attendant Tina Mucklow, and three flight crew. Engineer H.G. E. Anderson, co-pilot William Ratajic, and Captain William Scott. It was with Scott that Cooper shared his audacious plan. Cooper had very precise instructions for him. Scott was to direct the plane toward Mexico at a maximum altitude of 10,000 feet and a speed of just 120 miles per hour. The minimum a 727 can fly without stalling. The crew reluctantly complied, taking off from Seattle at 7.40 p.m. Shortly after departure, though, Cooper ordered Mucklow into the closed cockpit, meaning that nobody would witness what happened next. Not even the two F-106 fighter jets ordered to follow the civilian plane. All the crew knew was that the rear staircase had been opened mid-flight, setting off an alarm and causing the pilot to take action. So when the plane landed at Reno for a planned fuel stop en route to Mexico, the crew was astonished to find that Cooper, his money, and his parachutes had all vanished. The only thing he'd left behind was a black clip-on tie. The FBI consequently launched one of the biggest manhunts in its history, but before it could find its man, it needed to identify him. So who was Dan Cooper? One thing was for certain, he wasn't Portland petty criminal D.B. Cooper. However, despite police quickly eliminating that Cooper from its inquiries, the name had reached the media, and it stuck. Amazingly, though, investigators weren't even sure where the hijacker had landed, if he landed safely at all. And over the months and years that followed, federal agents chased down hundreds of leads, some more substantial than others. For instance, one credible theory is that Cooper was a services veteran. It seemed plausible because he was clearly confident enough to parachute from 10,000 feet. And he also showed a good knowledge of modern planes and Air Force bases. Others speculate, though, that Cooper was Canadian, while some believe that he had connections to Belgium. The Belgium theory held some water because a comic book series featuring a military pilot by the name of Dan Cooper had been published there. Still, others still said that he was an American who went back to work in a normal life at the end of that four-day weekend. In fact, the only real breakthrough would come in 1980, when a young boy stumbled across bundles of dollar bills beside the Columbia River. Though the notes were badly decomposed, FBI technicians confirmed that these were the bills given to the hijacker. As for the rest of the money, though, nobody knows its fate. Nobody knows Cooper's fate either. Most people, including key experts brought in to investigate the case, believe that Cooper died while trying to pull off his heist. After all, he apparently jumped into freezing darkness wearing nothing more than a business suit, 
and the parachute he chose to leap with could not be steered. However, one person who believes she knows who the real Cooper was is Lisa Lepsey of Michigan. Indeed, she believes that her father, grocery store manager Richard, was the hijacker. Her evidence? Apparently, Richard Lepsey vanished just before Thanksgiving of 1971. The only clue to his whereabouts was his abandoned car, which had been left at a local airport with the keys still in the ignition. What's more, Lepsey's accent reportedly matched that of Cooper's, while his job also required him to wear a black clip-on tie. Indeed, Ross Richardson, who had written a book about the case, believes that Lepsey should be regarded as suspect number one. Regardless, in July of 2016, the FBI finally conceded that it hadn't got its man and probably never would. So after 45 years of looking, the agency closed the case. Cooper's ultimate fate, then, is one of the most compelling unsolved mysteries of our time. Please don't forget to share this video with your friends below. Please don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell to receive everything that's new.